Okay, so um, the refractive index is measured using an instrument called the Abbe refractometer. And this is actually quite an old instrument. Um, Abbe was a French scientist and uh, he worked in the 1850s and he developed this device and basically we're still using it. It was like a really great design. I mean, I think they've probably tweaked some of the aspects of it, but the basic concept of this device has not changed since 1850. So it's still called an Abbe refractometer. And um, we have one and, I, and I'm gonna show you a, a picture of it. There you go. So this is a picture I took in lab last week. And you can see that it looks kind of like uh, a microscope. In fact, it has uh, an eyepiece up here and you look through there to do your measurement and everything. Um, but it's a little more complex than a microscope because it opens up. So this portion right here actually has two glass prisms. So that's actually uh, like a chunk of glass, very highly polished surface um, glued into this, into this metal base. And then I, I, my picture didn't get a good angle because this top part also has a glass prism that matches that. And then the top part also has a light that will shine through the prism. That'll be the light that we're measuring how much it bends. So what we're gonna do with this thing then is uh, we're going to put our sample here on the glass prism, covering it up. Then we close this top down and basically we sandwich the, the liquid sample in between the two glass prisms. Then we shine the light through. What we're gonna be measuring is how much did the light bend when it went into the liquid and then it goes back into the prisms, okay? So this is a picture from an old textbook. Um, and um, although this doesn't look exactly the same, it has all the same parts because I said the Abbe refractometer is a pretty standard thing. So, you know, it's got an eyepiece. It has, uh, it has the, the prism. It's got water cooling to stabilize the temperature. We'll talk about the temperature. It's got a light source. This one swings up and down. The one on ours is fixed. It has like a little focusing knob that we that they call the drum. And then it has a knob for us to find where we can see the light. And I'll show you what we're gonna look for in just a minute. So these are basic instructions that you would use for any Abbe refractometer, okay? So you would turn on the water, you would open the prism. One of the things that we need to be careful of is we, we need to try as much as possible not to scratch the prism because scratches are gonna cause the light to, to sort of um, spread out. And what they will do is they will cause, uh, uh, how can I say it, that like, it's not even distortions, like the edge that we're looking for will, will get, We'll get fuzzy, basically. Okay. Um, we're going to put liquid on the prism. Um, we're going to use a pipette. We're going to have like a container of liquid. We're going to transfer that. Um, generally, we try to use plastic pipettes because plastic pipettes are less likely to scratch. If we use glass on the glass, we, we might incidentally scratch it. And then we've got to close the lid on. And one of the things we need to be aware of is that the the sample is not sealed in there and organic substances in particular can evaporate very rapidly. And so uh, we need to close it and then try to pretty quickly get our measurements set. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that in just a minute, okay? We also need to make sure we put enough on there that it really sandwiches the whole prism because if part of the prism is uncovered, then we get a weird distortion effect in our, in our measurement, okay? And then we turn on the thing, we look through the eyepiece and, and let me show you uh, what we're basically gonna be looking at, okay? So um, 
our particular, I haven't adjusted these. We, we had an older one. And, and the older one had one big circle and then you pushed a button and what was in the circle changed. The new ones that we have, which are really quite nice, what they actually have, I'm gonna show you this in just a minute. They have an, a small oval on the top instead of a circle. And then they have a larger circle on the bottom that has the scale on it. So this is all inside the eyepiece and then the rest of this is all black, okay? If that makes sense. And it can be confusing to people at first because when you just first put your eye on the, on the eyepiece, this is lined up to be directly visible, that the big circle on the bottom. You have to kind of actually look up inside the eyepiece to see the oval. I'm gonna show that to you, okay? So let me show you what these two things look like. Um, I went to the lab and I tried my best to take pictures inside this thing. And it was not easy to do, trust me. <laughs> but so this doesn't look like an oval because it because the way the only way I could get it in focus was to be kind of far out from the eyepiece. But it would be more like an oval like this. You see the two lines. And what's going to happen is when we look into there, um, there is potentially going to be a, a dark portion and a light portion. And this is created by the instrument by reflecting through two sets of mirrors, one showing where the, the light would go if it weren't bending, and then one showing where the light goes that it's bent, okay? And we're looking for this edge between the light and dark, okay? Um, and so let me just show you one more picture and then we'll We'll talk again about, this is the circle with the scale on it. I don't know if you can see this line right here. That line would be the measurement line. I couldn't get it all in focus, but that's more or less what it would look like. It's, it's actually a little bit bigger, but I couldn't get the whole circle into the camera, but that's basically what it looks like. So imagine that the oval is up here above it, and then you have the circle. Okay, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna look through we're gonna take the big knob and we're gonna start moving the big knob. And the big knob is basically going to slide. So imagine we have the light part up here, the dark part down here, okay? It's gonna be sliding that up and down. So can you see in my on my uh, video here? They're sliding up and down, okay? Now, depending on what the knob is set at at the beginning, you might see, remember this hand is, is just the light part. You might see only the light. So you need to turn it so it moves up so the dark comes into the circle. You might also see only the dark. So then you have to move the thing so it comes down. So what I tell people is put your stuff in, put your eye down and rapidly turn that knob a whole bunch sliding it up and down until you get both light and dark, and then we can fine adjust it. So that's what this first thing shows. It shows in theory, you've got these, uh, you've got both the light part and the dark part in your, in your piece. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to very carefully adjust that so that that line between light and dark is right in the center of the crosshair, okay? At that point then, if you can get that set, don't, touch the big knob again for this measurement. You're done, okay? It's set because what can happen is if we wait for a few minutes, the sample can evaporate out and then it's not gonna look like this anymore. It's gonna just be all dark and whatever, okay? It's gonna have weird distortions and, and okay? But if we've already set it, it's still valid, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look down to the lower part, and again, this is uh, from the older instrument. The newer instrument doesn't have quite as much thing. I'll, I'll show you that again. Uh, we're gonna look down and read the, the scale. So let me get that picture there. So we would look down, we would look at the line. Now, if you, if you look at the scale, 
Okay. Um, this big line is 1.35. This big line is 1.36. Then there's these smaller lines in between here. And these mark off one tenth of the space in between the two big lines. So this is actually 1.350. This would be 1.351. This would be 1.352 and so on. Then if you look, there's a big space in between even those two smaller lines. So what we could do is very similar to what we did in general chemistry. We can estimate the last digit. So the last digit would be the fourth decimal place. So we read the first three off of the lines directly, then we estimate the fourth. So for example, and this line didn't come in very, very well, but um, if we look here, this would be 1.359 and then, I don't know, one or two. It kind of depends. It's actually a quite a bit thinner line than it shows here because it's not in focus. My guess is that I would usually call it two, but okay, 3591, 3592, remember that plus or minus one in that last digit, but you should have four decimal places. There's always going to be the one, okay, because the, because the light has slowed down, the way that the thing is defined, the angle is always, the sign of that angle um, is always going to create a ratio that's bigger than the one, okay? So that's how we would measure it. We would write that down. And then the other thing we would do is we would record the temperature. Now, oh, I didn't bring that. I, I'm sorry, I didn't copy that picture in, but on our new one, there's this little electronic control box and it actually also has a digital thermometer. So we just look at the digital temperature and read it off there. And I forgot to grab that picture for this, this thing. Okay, um, and then just really quickly to clean this thing, what we wanna do is we wanna take a, a relatively soft um, paper cloth, usually we use something called a Kim wipe. And we wanna, we wanna just push down, soak up the liquid, lift it off, let the rest evaporate. We don't wanna wipe it because it'll scratch the prism. So, okay. 